The aim of this lecture is to answer a key question. What are the different types of co-design? After this lecture, thanks to the support of some examples and case studies, you will be able to understand what are the different types of co-design and when each of them has to be adopted. The adoption of co-design could have different purposes if you are considering either fashion products or complex products. For the former, co-design entails that collaboration is exploited since the early stages of idea generation and creative development, and focal company is generally looking for stylistic and technical innovation by the supplier. An example of this type of co-design could be the collaboration between Orange Fiber and Salvatore Ferragamo. Orange Fiber is a startup born around the idea to develop a textile from the peels of oranges. A super innovative textile, quite similar to silk in terms of touch and feeling, with a sustainable purpose to create value from waste. Salvatore Ferragamo had the purpose to improve the sustainable profile of their products. For this purpose, the two companies collaborate together to revise the material, find exclusive design and design new products, working on both stylistic and technical features of the products. In case of co-design for complex products, the purpose and the implementation are different. In this case, suppliers are mainly offering technical innovations, achieved through intensive collaborations with suppliers and mutual enrichment development. An example of this type of co-design could be the collaboration between Ferrari and Brembo. Ferrari and Brembo perform technical innovations to guarantee strongly interrelated components with complementary competencies, with simply a focus on technical performance. Beyond the purpose of the collaboration, there is a second variable to discriminate between different types of co-design, for instance, the characteristics of the decision-making process. In some cases, Co-design could be split between focal company and supplier. The two companies perform separated activities, have clearly separated roles and shared outputs and inputs at predefined milestones with sporadic interactions. In this kind of relationship, generally, focal company provides suppliers with input about the desired output, the suppliers work on this input providing evidences and ideas at the predefined milestones. During these meetings, the focal company gives feedbacks and suggestions until the final product is not achieved. This type of co-design is generally adopted with world-class suppliers or with specialized technological leaders. Suppliers have great technical competencies and have best performance and there is no need for a continuous sharing of competencies over time. An example of this type of co-design could be Para with the pharmaceutical company DuPont. In 1997, Para, the Italian beachwear company, aimed at developing the famous Lumiere Bra, known especially to be completely seamless. To arrive to this purpose, Existing textiles were not appropriate, and so it was necessary to develop something new and completely customized to Para's need. Thereby, a collaboration between Para and DuPont, leader textile company, was established. It was the creation of a new textile, but quite aligned with DuPont core competencies. So, there was no need to jointly collaborate, but a predefined sharing of expectations and partial results was sufficient to achieve the purpose. In other cases, companies have a joint development of the innovation. In this case, focal company and supplier jointly work in all of the stages of the innovation development, both the design and the engineering. The purpose of this approach is to share knowledge as much as possible among the actors, especially when the innovation is particularly innovative and distant from the traditional business of the two companies. So, there is the need of constant interactions and it is not possible to define up front rigid roles between the focal company and the supplier. 
Generally, this approach is achieved through the creation of ad hoc task forces and co-location of these teams in either the supplier's side or the focal company's one. This type of co-design is generally adopted when customer and supplier are innovation leaders, but they are performing radical innovations, and so their current competencies are not sufficient to tackle the innovation. Otherwise, this kind of approach is appropriate when one of the two actors, generally the supplier, is very innovative but weak from a managerial point of view. And so the focal company should also train the supplier and give support in sharing knowledge and competencies. An example of this type of co-design could be PARA with the pharmaceutical company ICP Italia. In 2000, PARA wanted to launch a very innovative product, the Air Push-Up Bra. The innovation was to make the bra lighter and unshrinkable, and Para was looking for a partner to develop this. The critical problem was that, to achieve the requested features, it was necessary to perform a quite radical innovation through an integration of competencies completely unexpected. Para decided to collaborate with ICP Italia, a supplier not part of fashion industry but a pharmaceutical company. Para had ideas about the results of the product but no competencies about what was necessary. ICP Italia had important pharmaceutical competencies but had no knowledge about the fashion industry. Together, jointly collaborating through a task force, they developed a polyurethane caps filled with gas. In conclusion, during this lecture you have seen which are the main features of co-design for fashion products, understanding how co-design differs between fashion and complex products, and understanding that different types of co-design exist on the basis of how the decision-making process is managed.